get to start Unit 4 today. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm excited. Yay. Unit 4. Unit 4. It's exciting. Okay, so we're going to start off with me just giving you a picture and asking you a question about a topic we haven't talked about because I think you can deduce the answer without actually knowing everything about what I'm asking about. It's a neat teaching technique. So here we go. Two functions. What are the two functions called? F and, G. F and G. Thank you. Their names are F and G. Their names are F and G. F does not inherently do anything. F is the name of the function that takes 4 and does what to 4? Makes it 10. There's, that's the verb we can start with. Makes it 10. Sure. The first add-on word I can give you is we're going to call each of these, think of it as maps. That's the big kid word for that transformation. The function F maps 4 to 10, 3 to 7, 2 to 4, 1 to 2. We're talking today, first half, about one-to-one -one functions. One of these, f or g, is a one-to-one -one function. One of them is not. Think about it for a second. Someone, we're going to try this here. Raise your hand without speaking. I will then call on you. Then you will speak, and you will give me what you think is the one-to-one -one function and why. Brooke. I think f is the one-to-one -one function. Yes. One Very good for an initial answer. Yes, one-to-one. -one. What about, what about, uh, what about, uh, function G. Do you think it's one to one? Ah, so you have to be very careful about how you say these. You're absolutely right. There's semantics here. We have to be very careful. Actually, really important semantics. I understand what you're trying to say, though. Um, so essentially, why? Be more specific down here. Why isn't this one to one? Someone raise their hand and tell me specifically why isn't that one to one? Go. Because there is A, B. Um, B no, give me values. Give me so specifics four here. Four is a value for most for two and three A. Yeah, for meaning, so three maps to four. And so and two maps for that's the let's just this is what you're zoning in on you don't really know why this is a problem or really what one to one means but that seems to be the problem that I told you there was a difference you lock onto that difference yes that is the difference this is correct that is absolutely correct um, let's look at a different function let's look at this function right here some real data for you it could be time and hours and then it's a bacteria population I always wonder how they count bacteria it's got to be done by computer um, from the data you are presented with right there, is that a one-to-one -one function? You do it by weight. Yeah. Well, maybe the weight doesn't change; it just transfers. Population of a room can ch the population of a room could change without the weight of the room changing. Oh, that you have to kill the bacteria. Yeah, true. yeah, it's tricky. It's interesting to think about, though. Based on that def based on the data up there, is that a one-to-one -one function? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Why? Does every A value have to be? Ah, so let's go back to this for a sec. Let's just clarify this. Let's get our language a little bit better. Let's go back and for what are A and B? A is the input and the output. Ah, yes. For every input, there's an output. This is input and this is? And what's another for input and output? Domain and range, thank you. For both of these functions, they have the same what? They have the same, same domain. What's the domain of these functions? Someone accurately describe for me the domain. Yes? From 1 to 4? 1 pi, pi plus 0.2, pi plus 0.3? Pi is a number. There you go. That's exactly what I just wanted. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes. What's the range? And we'll call this... I'm going to... Hold on. I need to delineate this here a little bit. This is... We're going to call B1, and this is B2. The range for B1... What's B1? Yeah, 7 and 10. And what about B2? 2, 4, two, four 10. Why, could, why didn't you say 10, 4, 2 or 7, 4, 2, 2, 10? Because then it wouldn't correspond to the main. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to correspond. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. It could, though. But usually what? What's the, the yeah, it, it, it's a general commonality that you're going to uh, write it from uh, back to recording. Okay, so we have domain and range. That's nice. Um, seems to be a one-to-one -one function right there. That's fantastic. Um, here's our definition, though. Here's the strict definition. I'm trying to give you as many big kid definitions, non-hand-waving, proper math. Mm -hmm. This is the type of notation you will see if you, will if you take more math, I mean, beyond high school. This is big kid notation. A function f is called one -to -one, a one-to-one -one function if it never takes on the same value twice. That is, f does not equal f of x2 whenever x1 does not equal x2. You can read that in reverse. If you have two different x values, when you plug them into the function, what do you get out? Two different, two different 
values. You can never plug in the same, you can never plug in different x values and get the same y value. If you do get the same y value from two different x values, we say the function is not one so to one. It's, it's almost like a horizontal line test. Bingo. It is a horizontal line test. Wait, no, exactly. Not you're, got, you're just, this is good. You guys are just teaching yourself today. I'm so happy about this. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's very good. So, so what does that mean? Here's a parabola. It means that if I just took maybe this x value and this x value, and there's y1, what does that tell us? It tells us that f of x1 is equal to f of x2, so therefore not 1 to 1. That's a shorthand for 1 to 1. Looks like uprights. What? Ah, so do we have to do linear? Well, let's just look at linear functions in general. Linear function. Is there any way for that for a horizontal line to cross more than once? No, it's ah. So let's let's look at these data sets for a second. Let's look at this data set. If we plotted this data set out, what would it look like? It might look like that. Is it one to one? Mm, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's kind of ambiguous. I'm sorry. It's not as it should be a little better. Let's do those dots right there. So wait, it doesn't matter if it doesn't pass the horizontal line test? Ah, uh, but does this pass the horizontal line test? Well, I don't know, but the other one yeah. didn't. The other one didn't. It wasn't one to one. It was, oh, so it can't pass the vertical. This right here? This is a function that does not, I haven't described a horizontal line test yet, but this is not a one to one function. So therefore, it does not pass the horizontal line test. Uh, we'll get to it in a second, okay? You, you used a term that we haven't defined yet, so just wait a second, okay? Going back to this, let's say we connected them like this. Are there, any, are there any pairs of x values that map to the same y value? No, it's not. So what does the function have to do? I understand that. Stop saying it that way, though. If, so this function is a one. So let's define it by what it can't do. It can't do what? Ah, you can't curve back down, and you also can't do what? There's one other thing you can't do. Ah, well, it wouldn't be a function if it did that. It can't do this. Can't stay constant, yeah. right? Because if it stayed constant, you have an x1 here and an x2 there, and it maps to the same y value. So if the function can't turn around, if the function cannot turn around and it can't be constant, what is it doing? Ah, always increasing. You guys said it. Or always decreasing. I really want you to use that word always, everybody. I really want you to use that word always. Some books, when they say decreasing or increasing, they mean always increasing or always decreasing. I don't think that's specific enough. I've run into problems before where I had no idea. This is recent, like last year in multivariable. Like, why are they calling this an increasing function? It's not, oh, they mean strictly increasing. So if you ever see increasing referred to in a textbook or online, you know, I, I've, I guess I just taught differently when I was in high school and college, think of it as always increasing or always decreasing. If it's always increasing or always decreasing, can it ever repeat a y value? No. No, no it can't. So what does that lead us to? It leads us to this. Bingo. A function is one-to-one -one if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. Is that blue function a one-to-one -one function? No. no. There is one horizontal line. In fact, let's just infer here. Let's just actually project this down a little bit. Let's say it went down like that and kept on going down like that. Uh, there's an infinite number of lines that violate the horizontal line test, so this is really not. How many lines do you think there are that actually pass the horizontal line test? Meaning, how many lines can you draw that are horizontal that pass through the function once? How many do you see up there? How many, Nell? Well, yeah, the, what we would identify it. That's a 100% proper way to identify it in this class. Um, this it, it, because of that bend, it might not be a quadratic, but you can still call it a vertex, and that will, everybody will understand what you mean. Right there. The max, yeah. If you want to know what that's called um, when you take calculus, this would be called, if this function always went down on either side, this would be called an absolute maximum. Let's say it went back up again like this, even went down. This would be called an, a local max. Because in the neighborhood around it, is it the highest point? <laughs> that is actually a mathematical term, neighborhood. The immediate vicinity around it. That's not a strict definition because you don't have the vocabulary to learn the proper definition. But here it is. Is it really easy to, pr to visually believe that something is not one-to-one? -one? Yeah. 
Yeah, because all you have to do is draw one horizontal line that passes through more than one point, and done. In general, is it easier to prove something isn't one-to-one -one or is one-to-one? -one? What do you think? Isn't. isn't. Proving the negative, you'll find, is frequently much easier than proving the positive. Because when someone says a fr something like, it's always this way, all you need is one way it's not, and they're wrong. Right. So, let's keep moving here. So it's is a good it, time. does it have to be linear? No, it does not have to be linear. Okay. You'll see. Just go, we'll go with it. Patience. What about this? Patience. patience, grasshopper. Patience. What about this one, Nate? Nate? What's that look like? Use your hands. What's it look like? Oh. All right? It's cubic, right? Yeah. Is this one to one? Yeah. 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 Oh, you're right. Like it's it's a little bit. Oh, no. I'll oh, plug in any value. It always. It, yeah, I think, yeah. I think that it's one to one. Who thinks it's one to one? Who thinks it's not one to one? Oh, I love it when this happens. It's perfect. Anybody want to defend their point? You think it's not one to one? Yeah. Why? The function goes like this and goes ah, back down. Ah, to, to, to communicate to the recording uh, uh, for our court, you know, what, what the stenographer? Right, stenographer. Um, the hand motion was up then down. What does the cubic function look like, everybody? Does the cubic function y equals x squared, does it go down at all? No. Uh, let's think here. What this looks like, everybody, draw, it's always what? If it was always increasing, it would be one to one. I'll give you another truth here. It is not always increasing, but you can't prove that yet because you haven't taken calculus. That's what x cubed looks like. So again, is it one to one? It is. It is one to one. Are there any horizontal lines that pass through more than one point? What's the only point on that graph you might be a little worried about? The origin. Oh, let's talk about the origin here. Oh, I'm sorry. There's the origin. Thank you for narrating your life. That's good. good. You should do that. It's a very family guy. Um, <laughs> at that point, you can use calculus to prove that at the origin, the function is either increasing or decreasing. And this seems to violate what I told you as always increasing or decreasing, but here's the caveat. Are there any other points where it's not increasing or not decreasing? No, it's only that singular point. Everywhere else it is increasing. This passes the horizontal line test because f of x, if f of x is equal to x squared, x cubed, sorry, and x1 does not equal x2, then f of x1 does not equal f of x2 you have two different numbers and you cube them, is, it, is there any way you can get the same output? No. 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 So therefore, this function is no one. 2, 1. Yes. So does this answer your question? Does it have to be linear? Yes, it does. No, it does not have to be linear. No, it does not. It does not have to be linear. <laughs> but yes, I'm really sure. Okay, good. <laughs> it does. It reminded me of that. I told you about that, the subtitle thing that happens. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if, you, if you run the <laughs> you, you just did that. You just did that where like the subtitles are here, but the text is here. The other movie's running, but the text from, like, Where's Waldo is running. Where's Waldo? That was just the most random thing I could think of off the top of my head. You don't even know what that is. It's okay. How do you not know what works? <laughs> I ask myself that every day when I say things like, who knows what Carl Sagan is? And you guys go, what? I know, you're confused. It's okay, just go with it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's on the record, too. I love it. <laughs> we already answered this question, too. Is this one-to-one? -one? No. 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 Why? Yeah, yeah, they're all curved here. It's a parabola. It turns around, right? If we needed to give the concrete, most simplified way to do this, you could say it like this. F of 1 is equal to F of negative 1. Therefore, not 1 to 1. The way you can generally say this is F of x1 will always equal F of negative x1, right? And x1 does not equal negative x1 as long as x1 does not equal 0, right? So how many different pairs are there that violate this horizontal line test? Any number that isn't zero pairs up with its opposite. Yeah. Any number. Any, any, any number. OK, so let's look at that data set again. Let's go right here. Let's go to this data set. Here's, some, here's that population growth of bacteria. What's different about um, this table? 
This is very similar to the original table. What's different, though? There's something that's slightly different. They switched what? Why would it be... So in this case, the time is being written in terms of the population. Before, we were writing the population in terms of the time. Why, w why would this might... Why, why would you ever want to look at this? Why would you want to write the population in terms of time? How, yeah, maybe you want to know how long it'll take to reach a specific population, right? Um, maybe you have an accurate way of measuring population, but not um, time. Maybe you maybe maybe you come across a certain amount of bacteria, and you want to know how long it's been growing for. You plot, you measure the population of the bacteria, the weight maybe, right, or something. We're not quite sure. And then we figure out the time. In terms of a practical application of functions like this, um, let me see if I can walk myself into the same hugely philosophical question I walked myself into last block. Um, crime scene. Say there's a murder. Come across the body. What's one thing that you see people do all the time in, in crime shows? What do they determine? Why do they do the liver temperature? Time of death. As time goes on, what happens? It gets cooler. Gets cooler and they have functions that model the cooling. And therefore, what can they figure out? When they die. When they die. When the person dies. Exactly. Um, and the C block question was, what happens when you die? <laughs> um, and I kind of got a lot of blank stares. Um, there's a new notation up what here, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing what happens up here while I'm teaching. Sometimes a little bit more gets out than I want. That notation, how many people have seen that notation before? You've all seen it, but not in this fashion. There's a little tiny negative one up there. Here's the first thing I'll tell you about that. Here's the first thing. The first thing is, it's a red warning. Does that sound OK for red warning? The red warning I'm going to give you is this, right here. Here's the red warning right here. It is not on it. It means inverse. It means inverse. We have a function, our first function, our first function right here, let's call it f of t. So n equals f of t right here. It takes your time and it turns it into a population. We like going from left to right. Down here, we have the population, and it goes back to time. It is the inverse. It is the opposite direction. What you're doing is this. You have, an, you have a domain, an input set. Maybe one of them is r. I'm speaking. Let me finish. This function might take r and map it to s. So f of r is equal to s. What is f inverse going to do? f inverse is going to take s and map it back to r. It's going to do that for every single element in the domain. Let's say there was another element p and it mapped to q. f would have to map q back to p. All of them. It has to be covered set. You have to cover them. So if f inverse only maps half of them back, is it called the inverse? No. No, it's not. If f is the inverse of f inverse, Sorry, I just gave you the answer. Dang it. If f inverse is the inverse of f, what's the inverse of f inverse? F, yeah. They're inverses of each other. So f is the inverse of g. If f is the inverse of g, g inverse of f. In our realm of math, yes. One and then two. Yes? It does not. It does not. It does not. It, does, it means inverse. There are some functions, some functions where putting one on top does give you the inverse, but does it happen always? Yep. No. For example, let's say we had a nice simple function y equals 2x minus 3. Let's run the function on a few values. Plug in 1, what do you get? Plug in 2, what do you get? 3, 4. So this is the function, we'll call this, let's give it a better name, f of x. And it takes y and it maps it to f to y. What would f inverse do? It would take everything from y and map it back to, maps 3 back to 3, 1 back to 2, and negative 1 back to 1. Find me that relationship now. So let's talk about this. Anybody have f inverse? Yeah. What do you think it is, Mariah? Who got that? That's actually going to be the same as what? How many people got that? Does it work? What's 2 times 5? 
Oh, five, sorry. Five plus three is? Eight. Divided by two is? Four. Three plus three? Divided by two? Eight. It works. It does work. Yay. How'd you do that? Just because. A little elbow grease? Okay. There's some nice steps here. Ways to make it mechanical. The algebra will be different depending on the complexity level of the question. Uh, the First of all, it needs to be one-to-one. -one. You'll notice in the definition up here, where did I put it? Oh, I didn't actually put the definition of one to, for inverse function, did I? Sorry, I'll actually put that in there. You'll actually like that. Here it is, right here. I'll put it in. You can look at it while we're typing this out. So looking at this, uh, how to find an inverse. First, you start with the function and write it as y equals. So what was it? y equals? 2x plus, and then you have two steps, and you can do them in either order. The two steps are switch the x's and the y's, isolate. Three minus, minus 3. Switch the x's and y's and isolate. That's the general way of remembering it. Let's do it with they say, the way they say. y equals f of x. Solve this equation for x in terms of y. Can we do that? Sure. x is going to be y plus 3 over 2. What's the third step? To express f inverse as a function of x interchange x and y. y equals? Oh, cool. Bingo. All set. Could we have switched x and y first and just isolated y? No. Yeah. Yeah. You could switch x and y first and then isolate y. Or you can isolate x and then switch x and y. It's the same thing. Same exact thing. I traditionally switch x and y first. You do not have to do that. You do not have to do that. Um, does it get more interesting depending on the complexity of the, pr the, the uh, equation? Sure. What happens if we had y equals x cubed? Let's switch first. x equals y equals cube root of x. That is, th these are inverses of one another. Y, w plug in 2 here, you get out 8. Plug in 8 here, what do you get out there? 2. two. So graphically, what do these look like? Graphically, what do these look like? I've got to turn off a few things here. Helix. A DNA helix. DNA helix. Watson and Crick. Everybody knows who Watson and Crick are, right? Oh, man, really? How many of you have taken biology? Raise your hand right now. How many of you have taken biology? Keep your hands up if you know who Watson and Crick are. Two of you? Who are Watson and Crick? Yeah, won a Nobel Prize for it. Yeah, kind of important. Slightly. <laughs> biology, maybe. Okay, anyway. So, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's y equals the cube root of x. Solnit math now. y equals x cubed. There they are. So there are two functions that are inverses of one another. Let's graph those linear ones and see if we can figure out a common relationship. So let me turn this one off. Let's turn this one off. And I'm going to turn on 2x minus 3 and x plus 3 divided by 2. Hold on one second. Let me just get this zoom right here. Uh, uh, zoom standard. Here are, the, here are these two functions. A function and its inverse. They are inverses of one another. There you go. Bingo. Why do they look? Well, that's the question. So here is y equals uh, x plus 3 over 2. And here's the function y equals 2x minus 3. What is the common relationship between the two? There's a symmetry, yeah. It's a symmetry, what? To y equals x. Symmetry over y equals x, exactly. If I actually put in the line y equals x, look what happens. Oh. And let's just make it even more fun. Let's turn them all on at the same time. And graph. hard to see in the middle there. Right. I'm going to zoom. Yeah. I'm going to do a window here. Let's do negative 4 to 4 and negative 4 to 4 and we graph this. There's x cubed. What's it graphing now? Root. Nope. Cube root of x. It's curved right there. Now it's graphing 2x minus 3, x plus 3 over 2, and look what it's going to graph last. Bingo! Yay! Pretty. Pretty.
Oh, it looks like a... Looks like a guy dancing in a spotlight. Did we just discover a map of Rorschach test? <laughs> so, here we go. Here are the intersection points. Take a look. They're all on the line. Y equals X. Let's see why this actually makes sense. It makes sense because if I had a function, and let's say I graphed, uh, uh, I'm trying to give you a good one here. Uh, here's this, blue. Let's say that point is AB, right there. What point has to be on the inverse? Close. BA. BA has to, when you plug in A, you get out B, but when you plug in B, you get out A on the, the inverse. If you graph that, let me draw it again. That's just the upper half, right? Looks like this. If you graph this, you want to figure out what's the, like how, how do you prove it's a reflection? For that, I'm going to draw a, I'm going to actually cut in a real quick sketch here. I'm going to cut it. No, there is. What is it? Yes. There are functions whose inverses are themselves. So on this one right here, take a look. We have A, B right there, and what do we have right here? B, A. You can use basic geometry. This is A, what type of triangle? Mm -hmm. This is an identical right triangle. You can prove that this distance is the same as this distance, and you can prove that it's a perpendicular intersection right there. What that means is this is a reflection across y equal x, x equals y, y equals x. It's a reflection across y equals x. So one way you can get, if, if you're taking the inverse of a one-to-one -one function, the inverse is just the reflection over the line y equals x. Sometimes is this really hard to draw? Yes. Sometimes it's hard to draw. A cool method you can use, literally, fold your paper over y equals x, and then you can see an outline. What you can literally do, I, I remember doing this in high school. I had some crazy function, right? I took my pencil lead and went like this a bunch of times. What did I then draw? Y equals X. I then folded the pencil down. And what did the pencil lead do? It, 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 it made the reflection. It made the reflection. That's something you can do. Or you could do a few points and do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can do this point by point. I highly recommend that you do it carefully. Um, sometimes graphing the reflection is not as easy as you think it is. Getting the curvature exactly right can be really maddeningly complex if you just don't take it point by point. If you do it point by point, take a ruler and literally go, like, do the distances out. Oh it's not that hard. You just connect the dots. The thing is, once you see the correct one, it clicks. You're like, okay, there it is. That's fine. You have to stay on a night. Yes, exactly. You do have to stay on a 90 degree angle. Okay, so there was one other thing in this definition which was really important. It says, let f be a one to one function whose domain A and, have, and has range B. Danilo. Its inverse function has domain B and range A. This is something that's really, really helpful for you. Have you guys spent a significant amount of time finding the domain of functions? What have you spent less time doing? Range. Why? It can be really hard. What does this tell you? You can what? Find the domain of the inverse. Because if you find the domain of the inverse, what have you found? The range of the function. Do you now know how to find the uh, range? Do you know? Do you now know how to find? Do you now know how to find the inverse of a function, a one-to-one -one function? Sure. So, for example, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Yes. Yes. One third. Cube root is one third power. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about exponents next, but cube root is one third. Seventh root is one seventh power. Okay. So basically, this summarizes to this. Cool. Very helpful. Mainly, the thing you're most interested in is this right there. Find the do find the excuse me. Find the domain right there, and you can find the range. Let's put this in the practice and give you a fun one. Find me the domain and find me the range of this function. Quietly, by yourself, see what you can do.
There we go. So yeah, it's x such that x does not equal. Finding the range is more challenging, so what do you have to find first? So let's do the switch first. x is equal to y plus 2 over. Someone tell me what I should do next. Yes, x times y minus 3 is equal to. Now what? xy minus 3x is equal to y plus 2. Now what? Subtract y. And and do what? Yep, we can do 3x plus 2. That's better. I like that. Ah, what's the magical step? My favorite thing in all of math. Factor out what? Oh, nope. Y. y. And what does y equal? What's the domain here? So what does that mean the range is? All done. Brilliant. Learn how to factor. You have that under your belt pretty much. You just need to remember when to do it. Yeah, cool, huh? So now do we have a cool way of finding range? Yeah. Certain fun. I mean, it's better than what we had before. Yeah. It's better than what we had before. We didn't really have to, like, yeah. make something up. I'm thinking the FAQ. Think about it a lot. Yeah. And he keeps on bringing up these brilliant ways to solve problems like these. And I'm like, why didn't our teacher, like, this is something I wish that somebody had mentioned to me when I was struggling with range. Well, the, well it, 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 you're basically getting it. Why can't you just learn everything at once? I guess. <laughs> But you're right, there are optimal ways to tune the, the teaching. Okay. We're going to do another one. You kind of like that idea? It's kind of nice? It's not bad. It's not bad. You, again, you'll have things that will come up. So, how about you do this one for me? No calculators. No calculators. And, yes, use your pencil and paper. Please answer that question.